hello uh, for our uh, guests. Uh, it's a great pleasure and uh, it's uh, wonderful for us to host this, uh, this lecture on uh, philosophical uh, counseling and this topic for uh, all the philosophical community, how the uh, clients perceive a uh, philosophical uh, counseling or philosophical practice uh, 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 problem and how is to be client. So it's important. Uh, I, we hope uh, that we have many participants in, uh, in Facebook. Uh, we do not allow many participants in uh, in a Zoom session because uh, uh, we have uh, some um, problems with the hackers, and uh, that's why we uh, prefer to uh, be uh, online uh, to participants uh, in the Congress and their uh, personals, uh, in, uh, th those uh, personal friends and person they, they invite and uh, people who want to listen, even to ask questions they could do on uh, Facebook. So we uh, uh, already uh, live on Facebook, we can uh, start. Thank you, Antonio, thank you for your uh, words. Um, let me welcome our, um, our collaborators. I um, say uh, welcome to Jose Humberto Diaz, PhD in Moral Philosophy from Atlantica Instituto, uh, Instituto Universitario from Lisbon, Portugal, and to Tiago Pita from the same uh, uh, institution, Atlantica Instituto Universitario Lisbon, Portugal. They will give a lecture on how does a client experience philosophical consultation uh, this is quite an amazing topic, and I'm looking forward to listening you, listening, listen to, to you both. Uh, sorry for the emotions. Um, tell us more about your project, as I understood from the from the description of, of the lecture. It is actually uh, an introduction of what uh, project around office um, uh, is is about. Am I right? Yes, you are okay. completely right. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation, Anna and Antonio. It is a, a great honor to be here uh, talking about this topic. And uh, um, we, we try to do something uh, new. Uh, so in our research, we didn't find anything similar. Um, so we think it is very important for applied philosophy and more specific for philosophical counseling um, to do this kind of, of work. We, we need to, to assess um, the philosophical tools. For example, we are in philosophical counseling, of course, but uh, we can imagine uh, philosophy for children, for example, and uh, applied ethics, uh, etc. So this is a, a new kind of work uh, in, in philosophy. We need to assess uh, the, the, the application of the philosophical tools. Tiago, do you want to say something too? Yes, just to, um, well, we prepare a, a small video to try to explain a little bit further, but it's, uh, for us it's very important to assess, to study the outcome, I mean, the results of our work. So. If we are doing something with children or we in, inside a, an organization, we should assess the results and see if we are getting the, the results that we are aiming to. Okay? That's it. Looks like we have a, a small uh, problem. Uh, please, uh, Humberto. Uh, Do you hear us? Phone. Yes, yes. We are listening okay. to you, actually. Oh, probably a delay on internet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or some magic, who knows? Philosophical counseling is like magic. I always think about. <laughs> oh, you should uh, you should tell us more about this magic uh, in philosophical consultation. 
Yes, we, we can say some, some words more. Um, it was a, a, a very interesting experience. Um, we, we have a, a questionnaire on Google Forms uh, with some, some questions. We try to, to think about uh, the best questions and uh, what kind of questions we need to, to do um, to get important information to uh, do a more, um, a better work. Uh, that's the idea, a better work in philosophical counseling. And I, ke I can give a, a, an important example. I, 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 I like to, to, to share uh, with Tiago this, this important example. It is about the, the PEC. Remember, Tiago? Um, we have one client that give a, a suggestion why we don't have a pack with uh, with 10 or 20 uh, consultations uh, because uh, if we have uh, um, a client who wants to to work in a, um, a more deep way um, he, his philosophy of life for example um, it is not very useful to pay session by session by session you know so um, that's what, a, a great idea, but we, we never think about the, these, these kind of things. So this is a, a very good example to, to show the, the importance of this uh, tool, uh, of this uh, uh, assess tool um, concerning the, the philosophical um, counseling work. And also a very curious thing, not only to, to the people who say sooner or later be ready to listen to us. But uh, it, I don't know if many of, uh, of philosophical practitioners do know how come the clients uh, reach them. So how did they, the clients get to know the philosophical uh, practitioner? Of course, it's very interesting. How does the client reach us? So in order to not only to understand the mean, but also to improve on that link. So let's say that the, the, the client is reaching us through, well, through Facebook. So maybe we need to uh, invest a little bit more in, in marketing on, the, on, on Facebook. And, and so this kind of a small detail is all about our, our work. We are trying to reach, uh, to, to reach the maximum information. So we did a small questionnaire, but we are improving it. So I'm um, looking forward to listening to your questions also. Yes, we have here two, two good examples. And um, uh, when, uh, when we publish the, 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 the article, the written, uh, the written article, um, people can see uh, the results question by question and can see the, um, the important information we can get with this uh, questionnaire we did in, um, in Google Forms. So, I, uh, yes. Uh, well, I have uh, questions. I uh, do sometimes uh, do myself uh, philosophical consultations. And uh, I start with do consultations in um, online format and then physical and again in online format. And, um, do you, uh, first of all, do you uh, have consultation in online format? Is for you, is it uh, different in the uh, reaction of the client with its uh, physical format or in, in uh, online format? Do you feel the difference or in uh, client reaction, I mean? Yes, of course. Um, in this moment with, uh, with the, the COVID era, uh, we have uh, eighty percent of uh, uh, online consultation, um, and I think uh, uh, it is a very good way uh, to promote our work because um, two years ago we never imagined that we can work with the clients of uh, the north of the country uh, who lives uh, three hundred kilometers uh, far from uh, the the office. So uh, now everything is possible. We, we, we now have, uh, for example, clients from Brazil, the other side of the, the ocean. So um, now we, we have a, a good 
good uh, opportunities to, to promote philosophical counseling sessions. Um, of course, it's different. Um, I think it, it is more easier to get results in a, um, a face to face in presence, but uh, uh, in online consultation, we can work uh, other things and it is more comfortable to the client and, and for us too, uh, because we don't need to, to go by bus or by uh, subway or any other, or by car. Uh, so we we can get more time to to work in in the in the process and so on. Tiago, do you have something yes. to say? Um, yes, we as everything in life, as you may understand, we have uh, points uh, for it and points against it. So uh, the first one, uh, it's very useful for us to reach an, a bigger number of, of of people because if we are only in Lisbon. So people from other cities or other countries cannot attend. And this, in this way, they can uh, be consulted by us. Um, if, it, if we are talking about uh, psychotherapeutic uh, consultations, we believe that, for instance, more or less 80% of the communication could be nonverbal. But since we are aiming for a more rational uh, um, um, say perspective, so um, a lot of times it's, it's, it's also um, faster. So we reach the, the topics with, uh, with a little more speed. So we don't get distracted by, by some, some, some variables. So it's a, it's, a, it's a balance. In some cases, we do see it's a, a very good to be in situ, so face to face. But other times, it depends on the kind of situation, problem, and also uh, person. I I would I would uh, suggest. Uh, but I uh, know that you have a very special uh, uh, methods in uh, doing uh, philosophical consultation. Uh, myself, for example, I do uh, appreciative uh, philosophical counseling, and I mix it with experiential uh, counseling, doing. Uh, a guided meditation, for example, and then rationalized the, the results and uh, uh, the experience and so on. But you do uh, something more logical, I, uh, as I remember your methods. Could you give some hints about your methods for the uh, for those who do not know yet uh, what philosophical practice is and what uh, your uh, practice especially uh, is? Okay. Um, in in this uh, presentation, um, we we only have uh, the project method. Um, it is the um, our our tool, uh, and uh, it was with that tool that we assess uh, it. Um, but uh, for example, uh, me and Tiago, we have another methods. Um, we are working now in a, a new one. Uh, we called uh, Happy Fee. We, we are working on happiness, on technology, on philosophy, and on psychology. Uh, because Tiago has a PhD on psychology, I have a, a PhD on philosophy, so we are trying to work together. Because uh, in most times, clients have both problems, in a, a psychological problems and philosophical problems, so we can work together. But concerning this one, in our video, uh, anyone can see the video in the, in the website of the Congress and uh, YouTube too. Uh, we have an explanation about uh, what is uh, project method. Uh, yeah. it is, um, we have a, a paradigm in this method. Uh, we see the, the human being has a, a fundamental project, uh, like uh, Martin Heidegger said, for example. Um, of course, uh, um, we can have projects in life. That's the way we, we are working for. But uh, um, besides that, we are a project, uh, a human project. So we must construct, we, we must know ourselves. And uh, philosophical counseling, it is a very good way to, to work on that. As a, as a kind of a, uh, a conclusion, so we think that uh, we as a human, every human being has a project. And so he himself or herself is a project with, with a lot of projects inside that could be 
um, realized, so to be first understood, so the self and the, the, the self-knowing and the, the develop of one is very very important. But so we direct our work not only for the the the, the, the human being as a project, but also some several projects that that precise human being wants to to uh, to bring to to life. So if I allowed, as I understood it, <clears throat> you actually s uh, set up a questionnaire. Uh, questionnaire needs in order for, for you to identify if the person actually needs a philosophical consultation. And after the questionnaire is filled in, you are able to know with what kind of person do you need to work with, well, right? How? Uh, it's, uh, we um, sometimes, this is not, for instance, if you want to uh, do some paella, you need to have rice. So you go to the supermarket and you buy yourself a kilo of rice. So it's more or less easy. You just need to find the supermarket. In this situation, it's a little more um, difficult because some, some people actually, they don't know what they want or what they need. So the first consultation is the one also to assess which problems are we addressing? Which situation are we addressing? If the person brings us, for instance, a moral dilemma, dilemma, why a psychologist? So the best, the, the best prepared person should be a philosopher. But for instance, if we are doing some, some, uh, some anxiety, some depression, for instance, so maybe we should uh, give the clinical psychologist a go, and then we can name to, as I referred previously. A different project to to uh, to to bring to life. I don't know if I I answer your question, Anna. Sort of, sort of. I have many. So, <laughs> as I understand, you are somehow combining the rationality from philosophical practices with um, the the analysis on the emotional uh, needs. Right, Pentruka, because psychology goes to understand the emotional basis of the human being, right? And you are somehow uh, combining and this, this and behavior also. emotionally and behavior. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That sounds great because you said about the questionnaire, and you make me uh, feel curious what kind of questions does this uh, uh, instrument uh, tool has. We, we in the in the video you can see all the questions. Oh, not oh, okay. not all, not okay. all. Uh, Tiago, remember? Uh, I yes, we three use three or four. But maybe yeah. myself and George we didn't make our seven. Oh, please oh, for yes. the audience uh, pre yes. presenting here, it would yes. be very helpful. So the the questionnaire was uh, in within this the frame of measuring or assessing what kind of, uh, not what kind of need, uh, but what drive, for instance, what drives a, a specific person to look for a philosophic, philosophical practitioner using uh, the project method, okay? So we run a questionnaire, more or less, uh, um, as, uh, if you are satisfied or not, how do you, the, I, how do you uh, found us? This kind of question. We have 12 and we are presenting on the written paper and we only present three or four in this video. So that's one thing and I will return to that. Second thing is, I believe the question that you are um, putting us, um, what questionnaire do you use to assess if a person needs psychological help or philosophical help? We don't study and we don't have that tool. So uh, that's the reason why I, uh, I answer how uh, the, the, the way that I did. So we, we don't have uh, a tool, a questionnaire, a kind of a screening, a screening question that's, that allows us to see, well, do you have any a, 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 a psychological situation or a philosophical one? We don't. That's the reason why in the first session, we need to use our, our expertise and our uh, experience and our knowledge to understand uh, what do, for instance, if we have a person that has some psychological, let's, for the for theoretical reason, reason, 
a person comes and say, well, I, I've got a depression and my life has no meaning. So that goes we, to that goes to the psychological um, analysis yes, because, of of a human being, right? Yes. So first, we need to address the depression, and then we can look for a meaning, the meaning of life. See what I mean? So it's quite it's quite in, it's quite intuitive, but we don't have that uh, that protocol uh, in order, and this uh, communication is concerning only to a couple of sessions in the project matter to see if the project map to see make it more or less clear to see if a person that goes through the method the project method uh, what kind of results or what kind of experience does that people feel and express in order or in the future we can see so let's take for instance 20 people and let's give them project method and another 20 people without any kind of philosophical uh, consultation whatsoever Let's so, measure before and let's measure after to see if the philosophical consultation does change something or not. And then inside that consultation, if the project, if the project method is one that we can re rely to make some change. So it's uh, an experiential uh, approach in, in, in part of psychotherapy or um, other kind of approach. If uh, you do psychotherapy in in uh, this uh, problem, and if uh, the psychotherapy is ended, did they continue with philosophical uh, practice, with philosophical counseling? Because sometimes we need we understand that uh, the client need also uh, philosophical and also psychological. If uh, the client say life had no meaning, basically it's a philosophical question. Meaning of life is a philosophical one, but depression should be treated in a psychological way. And exactly. afterward, it's all in the meantime, uh, you have to, uh, or as is just what I, uh, I thought, you just have to understand what the meaning of life is in generally, and what is uh, the meaning of life for this person, what could become a meaning of life if the person does not have one. I might, myself to pass on an existential crisis sometimes, and I say, my life has no meaning anymore. I cannot do my self-consultation, but in the end, uh, I uh, go to a counseling and they say, okay, what could become a meaning of life for you? What, what drive, what, what motivates you? What drive you to go uh, uh, to a meaning? So this kind of, cons of counseling is uh, philosophical in nature. So what is, is an experiential or is in a logical approach? Or, uh, or, uh, or as I say, using uh, meditation techniques as I do. So, uh, what other? Uh, so. Okay. As I, as it seems <laughs> like I'm uh, representing the, the psychological field because I. Yeah, well, we are so curious because uh, we are used with the traditional form, let's say traditional, of philosophical practice based on the mind, on thoughts right? And uh, here comes your model that somehow, as I understand it, combines the, the interest on the mind, but also the interest of the uh, evaluating the emotions, this, the feelings, which means for a philosophical practice, from my stand of view, from my point of view, that somehow combines two uh, opposite things. Oh, Please that's... enlighten us. So that's the situation with uh, every technician that works with the human uh, already understands that we cannot uh, split in small boxes. So that's the reason why to intervene in many social uh, behavior or events, we need a multidisciplinary team just to have the best results and the most lasting ones. So um, out of the experience, because I was conducting um, cognitive behavior um, psychotherapy and it seems um, technically interesting but, but only removing the symptoms so something less already was said we were lacking something okay from my experience my personal experience and um, and also 
when I was doing philosophical consultations, I was seeing that some of my clients were people facing some kind of mental illness. So in order, in order to not to, con to make a bigger confuse, confusion or mess, we should, that's my personal point of view, if we have the, case, the example that I, that I said and uh, our, our colleague also um, comment on it. So uh, if we have a person uh, living a depression and it's not feeling sad, it's living a depression, and it's not having some existential crisis, is uh, depression, clinical depression, okay? So if we have a person with a clinical depression and a person seeking the, the meaning of life, so in order to uh, conduct that search, we need to have that person who, as a human being living. So first we need to control that illness and then we can work on a different project. And the project could be try to find an immediate uh, meaning of life. So, and this is two completely different movements, but we think that could be combined. And we believe that the person, the client, uh, is better served, let's put it this way, is, a, is better served if we could combine those two fields. If, by another example, we have the situation uh, split a client feeling depressed or a client uh, looking for a meaning of life for instance or a moral dilemma so we don't mix the things so we those are the easiest ones the the, the worst ones the worst or, or at least more interesting ones are the ones that we can combine because if we look if we look back ph uh, 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 philosophy and psychology they always run together it's also medicine for instance so we now are under the paradigm of specification and we're saying that philosophy can only study one thing. Perfect. So if we are not able to study two or three, so let's get those experts in the same table because what we defend is the person's best interest. I don't know if George, sorry, I, when I start to talk, it's a... <laughs> and it's a yes, yes. Um... Uh, concerning this this research um, uh, of this lecture, uh, how does a client experience philosophical consultation? We only worked the project method, so we didn't work in a psychological way. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, the project method has uh, ha uh, has a paradigm. Um, the work of some important Spanish philosophers, for example, Ortega, uh, and uh, uh, another one concerning more ha a happy way, um, Julia Marias. Uh, and this, this school of Madrid, uh, a Spanish school, uh, they use uh, an interesting name, uh, Reason and Life. Uh, we, can, we can spell it in, in Spanish, um, ratio vitalismo or, or ratio vitalida. Uh, it is a mixture between the, the reason, uh, the, the rational work, and uh, um, the, the life. You know, so we apply reason to life. So it is a very similar expression, uh, philosophy applied to life, which was the title of my first book, I remember. Uh, so this is the challenge, um, work the, the rationality of the client, analyzing uh, his projects, uh, the person has a project and uh, the, um, his life projects, uh, etc. And uh, uh, try to do that kind of work uh, in a, um, a rational way. Uh, and we believe that the result will be a more organized life um, a more conscious life uh, and uh, um, a more happy life. Thank, thank you for your <clears throat> explanation. Thank you for making the distinction between um, what, let's say, classical philosophical practice and your model um, is 
contains. Um, the, I understand now that your model actually is a model that pursues happiness. Yes, you are right. Yes. Tell us so more about we, it. We, yeah, we can talk more about that. We are very interested. <clears throat> because, uh, because <laughs> yeah. You, you know, I, I did that. I said that because um, years ago, we started a, a collaboration on a happy lab. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yes, of and, course. Uh, and I wanted to understand more about what a happy lab can do. And I now will uh, listen to you and uh, you say um, more and more about this, uh, this happiness, this pursuit of happiness is, is becoming like an American dream, <laughs> you know? In these cases, it is more a Portuguese dream. Okay, a Portuguese <laughs> one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tell us this Portuguese happiness because, you know, we all um, pursue for happiness and we all, uh, let's say, deny sorrow. <laughs> <laughs> In yes, fact, we, we, we should can... accept it, but still. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Tell us about this uh, happiness, about this uh, aim, let's okay. say. Okay. It is very interesting, your, your question, because uh, my, my plenary speaking of uh, oh. Sunday will be, about, will be about this topic, but we can, we can <laughs> here make a link between the, between the philosophical consultation and happiness, no, no problem. Um, so, uh, me and Tiago, we, we are uh, researchers in, in a project we have in Portugal, and our uh, main objective is uh, try to understand what's happening with Portugal in the, the World Happiness Report or ranking. We, we can look to the ranking too. So, we have uh, two trends on, on, on the ranking. Um, the first one, it is a negative one, um, from 2012 to 2015, uh, it was a negative trend uh, to Portugal because of the, the financial crisis and, uh, and other challenges. Uh, and the second one, from 2016, uh, we, we are now in a positive trend. So... Uh, this year, we Portugal obtained the best result, 58. Uh, so we we believe we are in the good way to promote happiness in all, all over the country, and we want to understand the reasons and what we can do as a country. Uh, and we are thinking in the next two years to to send. Um, suggestions to the Portuguese government uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, Portugal can do or need to do to, to get a better result in this ranking. So uh, we are analyzing that and uh, I suggest to make this link between philosophical counseling and happiness to read the report um, of 2013. And chapter number five, uh, for me, it is the most uh, philosophical chapter of, of the report. Um, and it's about uh, the, the idea, uh, Jeffrey Sachs is, is the author, and Jeffrey Sachs said that uh, we live in a non-philosophical uh, time. Uh, so uh, we need to change uh, if, if we want to, to give to the world more happiness uh, because uh, the world is uh, um, promoting uh, uh, the economics, uh, is promoting sociology, is promoting uh, uh, psychology, and the world is for forgetting the the philosophical dimension of life. And uh, for this group, uh, this work group they think we need to, to work more philosophy. And what is the suggestion to, to get this result? We need to create projects that we can, where we can work the, the Aristotle theory of virtue. So we need to, to, to work a little more the people, you know, uh, not only the money, not only society, not only the psychological processes of, of, of the mind, for example. We need to work the life of the people 
and the values of the people. So I don't know if I, if I answered. Tiago, you want but, to? Uh, yes, and I wanted to know what kind of projects are we already doing in Portugal in order to achieve that happiness? Is that correct? Thank you, Tiago. Yeah, right. <laughs> and if possible, to be replicated. Oh, okay. So first we can say that we uh, prepare for all the, um, uh, throughout our uh, um, uh, general uh, direction, we are um, in the verge of uh, providing all the school directors, so all the public network, will have a training of uh, organization, organizational happiness. Okay? We are participating and organizing three posts uh, to, to three uh, degrees in also um, people management and organization, organizational happiness. For instance, we are developing the project of happy schools. So we are co gathering also international network in order to, um, again, if uh, people wants to want to read about it, 2016 Bangkok um, report, the United Nations one. So it refers to the ha happy school movement. So we are also doing that in Portugal. We already. Uh, provided training to philosophy teachers because on the syllabus of uh, high school uh, students they can choose a topic of uh, applied ethics and everyone was al always selecting uh, euthanasia or uh, uh, pregnancy related situations so and we said why not happiness why it's yeah, part it's, of the, if it's part of the syllabus, why not? So we are be, being very practical and very and trying to go from the higher management to the to the to the high school uh, classroom or from the classroom throughout the, the also in the uh, secondary cycle in the university level. So we are trying uh, to bring happiness to uh, the, the topic of the day. I think it, I think it would be interesting to learn about how can uh, such a subjective um, state, let's say it, happiness, can be uh, evaluated with objective tools. How can we brings that uh, happiness into statistics so easily and that's why i asked you about uh, this pursuit of happiness uh because i i somehow wanted to understand better um actually what happiness means uh from your project points of view mm -hmm. because you are as you said you are addressing schools from students to uh, leading management that means you have a definition, a common understanding of, of on what happiness means. And of that's course. why somehow I wanted to uh, better understand because yeah. <laughs> it is such a subjective uh, aspect in our lives and it's so related to personal experience, to intimate experience experiences that um, I find it uh, difficult to be um, framed into <laughs> objective tools. Yes, I understand. But remember, as Tiago said some minutes ago, uh, you must remember, we always have two sides. Uh, okay. the, um, the, the most important side is uh, the subjective side, of course. We are a very rich person because of that. But uh, uh, the other one, it is the objective side. And uh, uh, so I must invite you to to come on Sunday to my plenary speak, <laughs> speaking, where so, I will present my definition of happiness. So uh, this is the teaser for your plenary session. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Okay. We, we can do that. But uh, um, it is very important to, to, to understand that we have these two sides. Of course, the, the subjective side is in the contents. We, uh, we are free to choose which will be the contents we want to use and to live uh, in our personal happiness. But uh, uh, at the same time, 
doing that, we have uh, objective side. For example, uh, I can remember some phrases from uh, not only Aristotle, but uh, Pascal, for example, says the same thing. Um, every people wants to be happy. So this is a, a, um, a common uh, wish. Um, an objective one. An objective and, one. Of course, uh, every people wants to be a better person or have a better life so this idea of uh, be a, a, a perfect one every day we, we, we can do better we can train uh, something uh, so we have here some characteristics uh, that we can that we, we can lead um, all all people to to a more objective way in, in the, the topic of happiness. And just to, to not to, because I'm not giving a plenary session, so I'm not going to be there. So uh, uh, promoting happiness doesn't mean that we need to refer to your happiness, Anna, or my happiness. So, um, for instance, uh, all of the, in, including the philosophical con concept, um, are the, for instance, the idea of good, the idea of love, are, uh, we have several definitions, several different definitions. And so, for instance, if we say that all the philosopher is looking for the truth, again, that truth has different meaning. But that doesn't mean that the, that the, the seek, the search of it should not be promoted. So we do compromise with the definition of happiness. So watch uh, George's uh, uh, conference, but we don't mix between promoting the happiness with, uh, we only need to prepare and do the things that makes you happy. Because- Can, we, it, can we understand happiness as a greater good or a greater <laughs> state of being or something like that? Um, see, George, Anna wants a definition <laughs> of happiness right No, I, I don't want a definition. I just want to understand to, to understand how many alternatives of happiness I can find. And I will listen uh, the plenary on uh, Sunday, promise. As many as many as you want. As many as, <laughs> as, as many as I want, want to develop. And that's the point where I uh, I I end up something at something it's like um actually meanings meanings of happiness can be brought by any person as many meanings as a person need right mm. but it depends if you if you if you make a connection um, or a link between uh, um, happiness and the contents so of course here you will find uh, thousands of different definitions. But uh, if you connect uh, the, the definition of happiness with uh, the, the formal uh, characteristics uh, of, of the concept, so you will not find a lot of them. Um, for example, uh, I can uh, um, give an ex uh, a suggestion of research and maybe Tiago can explore a little better than me because uh, um, it, 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 is, it has been the, the psychologists that uh, presented the, this kind of work. Uh, most psychologists, they uh, present uh, only two different uh, types of definition of happiness. Uh, the first one is uh, the um, eudaimonics, so uh, a definition uh, um, very similar of uh, Aristotle. And the other one about uh, hedonist, uh, more similar of Epicurus. So uh, we can read these, these two um, different ways of, of uh, conceptualizing happiness. Uh, so... This is an, an objective work, a scientific one on psychology, very known. Uh, so you prefer um, pleasure like Epicurus or you prefer reason like uh, Aristotle or, or um, 
or um, let me say meaning, maybe meaning, uh, a rational meaning like Aristotle. So only two I, options, not very I like, much. I must confess, I like your questions. Uh, and let's uh, remain with that questions in uh, these questions in mind. And I uh, would like to bring special thanks to you and to Tiago Pita. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for teasing us. Looking forward to, to hear you, to listen to you, to you in the plenary session from, for, uh, from Sunday. And uh, hope we will meet again in the next, uh, next session of uh, Lumen Events. Thank you for uh, accepting our invitation. It was uh, a beautiful lecture. And um, it was a pleasure for me to, to discuss about your uh, research interest, let's say. <laughs> okay, thank you very much and thank see you. you in the Congress. Bye bye. And see and, you. Uh, so thank much. you. Thank, thank you, you. Uh, both of you and all participants, of course, in the name of the uh, Lumen Publishing and Lumen Association, Sir Santerson. It's very important uh, because a part of our activities in the field of philosophical practice and of course in ethics and bioethics and ethical consultations and in philosophical practice consultation and so on. And it's important uh, for our uh, participants and for our friends to understand uh, that uh, philosophy is not a uh, long time gone and uh, humanity does not need philosophy, but humanity need uh, happiness. So uh, philosophy and psychology and uh, this uh, mixture between philosophy and psychology uh, could, uh, could uh, give, uh, give us a better sense of life. And this uh, is important part of this, uh, of this practice in, uh, in philosophical uh, practice, cons counseling, consultation and so on. And that's why we uh, think uh, it's important. We, we will have another, uh, in uh, this uh, Congress, we will have another pr uh, practitioners that could um, and, and will give lectures. Uh, Oscar Brennifer is one of them. And uh, of course, uh, from uh, Romanian Association, uh, Mr. Lobons will be uh, here with, uh, with the speech. So, but they uh, prefer a rational uh, part of uh, philosophical counseling. That's why we, uh, we are very delighted to bring balance in this, uh, in this area of philosophical practice, because you are uh, more balanced, uh, let's say, than other thinkers and other uh, philosophical counselors. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for give this uh, lecture and uh, this uh, important contribution to our Congress. Okay, thank you very much. Thank See you. Bye-bye. So